The binomial probability distribution can be very useful, but it takes a little practice. So let's do some examples. First, a quick recap of the basic scenario. If this is new to you, there's another video on the same channel and playlist that introduces the binomial probability equation. We have a sample space, or set of possible results from observations, and we classify some events in that sample space as successes, and the rest of them as failures. This is just an arbitrary label, it doesn't indicate what we want or don't want. We're thinking about results when we do a bunch of trials, each of which is an observation of an event. We're interested in whether each trial is a success, which is the outcome that fits our criterion, or not, for a whole bunch of trials. The binomial equation calculates the probability of seeing x successes when we do n trials, and is shown here. The probability of observing x successes is n choose x times the probability of success raised to the x power times the probability of failure given by 1 minus p raised to the n minus x power. Let's look at our first example and consider a population of frogs in a lake. We'll assume the sex ratio of 0.5 and we'll define the success for a trial in which we assess the sex of a chosen frog as that frog being a male. The success probability for any individual trial is therefore 0.5 and the probability of failure is 1 minus 0.5, which is 0.5. The question that we will address with the binomial probability equation is this. What are the probabilities of collecting six frogs, determining their sexes, and getting a result in which there are zero males, one male, two males, etc. from those six frogs? We can look at our binomial probability equation, and x will be those numbers, 0, 1, 2, etc., and n will be 6. The probability of success will be 0.5. Plugging those numbers in for the situation where we calculate the probability of seeing 0 males would give us 6 factorial divided by 0 factorial times 6 minus 0 factorial, all multiplied by 0.5 to the 0 power times 1 minus 0.5 raised to the 6 minus 0 power. This first equation is the one we just created and we can see that it simplifies a bit. The 6 minus 0 factorial becomes 6 factorial. The 0 0.5 to the 0 power becomes 1. The 1 minus 0 0.5 to the 6 minus 0 power becomes 0 0.5 to the 6th power. The 6 factorial in the numerator and denominator cancel to give us 1 times 1 times 0 0.5 to the 6th power, which equals 0 0.015625. We can also look at the probability of observing one male frog in our set of 6. Now the probability is equal to 6 factorial divided by 1 factorial times 6 minus 1 factorial, all multiplied by 0 0.5 to the first power times 1 minus 0 0.5 raised to the 6 minus 1 power. The 6 minus 1 factorial in the denominator becomes 5 factorial. The 0 0.5 to the first power becomes 0 0.5. The 1 minus 0 0.5 becomes 0 0.5 raised to the 6 minus 1 equals 5th power. The 6 factorial over 5 factorial reduces down to just 6, more on simplifying factorials and fractions in just a second. In any case, this 6 is multiplied by 0 0.5 times 0 0.03125 to give us 0 0.09375 for our final probability of seeing one male frog. Before we continue with the binomial probability calculations, let's take a look at calculating fractions with factorials. Let's look at three different ways to represent 6 factorial. If we write up the whole thing, 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, we can see that this is equal to 6 times 5 factorial. Likewise, it's equal to 6 times 5 times 4 factorial. Similarly, it's equal to 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 factorial. This is why the 6 factorial over 5 factorial simplified so easily in the example we just did. 6 factorial is equal to 6 times 5 factorial. The 5 factorials cancel, which just left us with the 6. If we look at the fraction of factorials for n choose x, we can see that it will always simplify considerably. If we expand out the factorial in the numerator, at some point the entire last part of it will be equal to the second term in the denominator, and those can be cancelled. This leaves us with fewer terms in the numerator, and only one factorial in the denominator. Let's take a look at how a fraction for a large number of trials could simplify. For example, 20 choose 7. 20 choose 7 would be 20 factorial divided by 7 factorial times 20 minus 7 factorial. This would be 20 factorial divided by 7 factorial times 13 factorial. 
If we expand out the numerator, we can see that we would get 20 times 19 times 18 times 17 times 16 times 15 times 14 times 13 factorial. The 13 factorial in the numerator and denominator would cancel to give us 20 times 19 times 18 times 17 times 16 times 15 times 14 divided by 7 factorial. We can expand out the factorial in the denominator into 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Once we've done this, we can see that a few more terms are going to cancel with one another. The 5 and the 3 in the denominator will cancel with the 15 in the numerator. The 7 and the 2 in the denominator will cancel with the 14 in the numerator. The 18 in the numerator and the 6 in the denominator can reduce to a 3 in the numerator. And the 16 in the numerator and the 4 in the denominator can reduce to a 4 in the numerator. Everything in the denominator has been cancelled, and what's left in the numerator is 20 times 19 times 3 times 17 times 4, which equals 77,250. Returning to our example now, we've already calculated the probability of seeing 0 males, or 1 male. Now let's calculate the probability of seeing 2 males when we choose 6 frogs. This would be 6 choose 2 times 0.5 to the second power times 1 minus 0.5 to the 6 minus 2 power. For our factorial fraction, the 6 factorial in the numerator and the 4 factorial in the denominator reduce down to just 6 times 5 in the numerator, which would be divided by 2 factorial, which is 2 times 1. The 0.5 to the second power is 0.25, and the 0.5 to the fourth power is 0.0625. When we multiply all this together, we get 0 0.234375. Looking at the binomial probability distribution for this scenario, we can see that it is symmetric with the highest probability at 3 males, that is, 3 successes. The sum of all these probabilities will be equal to 1 because there are no other possible results if we do 6 trials. And if we wanted to know more complicated results, such as the probability of 0 or 1, we could add these probabilities together. Let's look at another example. Consider the game of roulette. In this game, there's a wheel that spins and a metal ball that bounces around until it lands in one of the pockets in the wheel. In Europe, where roulette is very popular, there are 37 pockets. 18 of them have even numbers, 8 of which are red and 10 are black. 18 have odd numbers, 10 of which are red and 8 are black. And a zero, which is colored green and considered neither odd nor even. The simplest kind of bet is to bet on one of the two colors, or to bet on odd or even, and if you win, you double your money. Let's think about a scenario in which we spin the wheel three times, and we're interested in the probabilities of the ball landing in an even pocket zero, one, two, or three times. If we were betting on evens, this kind of calculation may help us figure out what our chances of winning money is. We can modify our starting binomial probability equation by putting in the three for n to get the second equation shown. When doing three trials, the probability of seeing x successes will be 3 factorial divided by x factorial times 3 minus x factorial, all multiplied by the probability of success raised to the x power times 1 minus the probability of success raised to the 3 minus x power. To work with our binomial probability equation, the first thing we need to do is figure out the probability of success. What is p? Since we're thinking about the probability of getting evens, our probability of success will be the 18 even numbered pockets divided by all the pockets, which is the 18 evens plus the 18 odds plus the one green, which isn't the odd or even. Doing this division gives us 18 divided by 37, which is 0 0.486486. Going to our binomial probability equation for three trials and plugging this into our probability of x successes will give the following. P of x equals 3 factorial divided by x factorial times 3 minus x factorial, all multiplied by 0 0.486486 raised to the x power times 0 0.513514 raised to the 3 minus x power. So what is our probability of getting 0, 1, 2, or 3 evens? Let's do the 0 first. We take our previous equation and plug in 0 for x. The probability of seeing 0 evens is 3 factorial divided by 0 factorial times 3 minus 0 factorial times 0 0.486486 to the 0 power times 0 0.513514 to the 3 minus 0 power. This leads to 3 factorial over 1 times 3 factorial, so those 3 factorials will cancel and the whole fraction equals 1. 
the 0 0.486486 to the 0 power becomes a 1. The 0 0.513514 to the 3rd power is all that's left, and that's equal to 0 0.1354. Now for the probability of seeing 1 even. The probability is 3 factorial divided by 1 factorial times 3 minus 1 factorial, all multiplied by 0 0.486486 to the 1st power, times 0 0.513514 to the 3 minus 1 power. The factorial part of the equation is 3 factorial over 1 times 2 factorial, and the 2 factorial cancels out everything except for the 3 in the numerator. The 0 0.486486 to the first power is equal to 0 0.486486, and for the exponent of the second probability term, 3 minus 1 is equal to 2, so the 0 0.513514 is squared. Multiplying all of this out gives us 0 0.3849. Now for the probability of seeing two evens. The probability is 3 factorial divided by 2 factorial times 3 minus 2 factorial, all multiplied by 0 0.486486 squared times 0 0.513514 to the 3 minus 2 power. The factorial part of the equation is 3 factorial over 2 factorial times 1, and the 2 factorial cancels out everything except for the 3 in the numerator. The 0 0.486486 squared is equal to 0 0.236669, and for the exponent of the second probability term, 3 minus 2 is equal to 1, so the 0 0.513514 stays the same. Multiplying all of this out gives us 0 0.3646. Now for the probability of seeing all three spins landing as evens. The probability is 3 factorial divided by 3 factorial times 3 minus 3 factorial, all multiplied by 0 0.486486 cubed times 0 0.513514 to the 3 minus 3 power. The factorial part of the equation is 3 factorial over 3 factorial times 0 factorial, which is 1, so everything cancels and the fraction is equal to 1. The 0 0.486486 cubed is equal to 0 0.115136, and for the exponent of the second probability term, 3 minus 3 is equal to 0, so the last term becomes a 1. Multiplying all of this out gives us 0 0.1151. Looking at the binomial probability distribution for this scenario, we can see that it is not quite symmetric because the probability of success is not 0 0.5. The most likely result is seeing even once, but seeing even twice is almost as likely. The sum of all these probabilities will be equal to 1 because there are no other possible results if we do three trials. We can do a quick mental calculation to see an example of how the casino makes its money. Remember that for bets on even, the house doubles the initial wager if you win. If we place the bet on even and then keep it there for all three spins, our final amount would be 2 times 2 times 2 equals 8 times what we started with. And that's quite a big gain. But the probability of that happening is 0 0.1151, which is less than 1 in 8, which is 0 0.125. It's possible for us to multiply our initial bet by 8 times, but there's a slightly less than 1 in 8 chance of that happening. That slightly less is where the casino makes its money. An interesting aspect of roulette is that it is played differently in Europe and in the United States. In the United States, there are two green pockets, 0 and double 0, so there are 36 pockets instead of 35. The payout being double is the same, but the probability of success is now 0 0.473684 instead of 0 0.486486. This creates a slightly different binomial probability distribution for roulette in the United States compared to roulette in Europe. And if you look carefully, you can see that the probabilities of winning are considerably less in the United States. This may be part of the reason why roulette is much more popular in Europe than it is in the United States. I hope you found these two examples useful in terms of trying to understand how to calculate binomial probabilities and use the binomial probability distribution to answer questions about the scenario we're studying. Lots of phenomena we're interested in can be described in a binomial way, and the binomial probability equation allows us to predict how often we should see certain kinds of observations. Click to show your appreciation if this video was a success.